Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Here to do another problem as part of the Harvard Square MTEL Math Workshop Series. We're going to do number 15 on the General Curriculum Math Practice Test. First we're going to read the problem and then we're going to go about strategies to solve it. Um, this is uh, the General Curriculum 03 Practice Test is, is there to help teachers elementary school teachers and special education teachers prepare for this exam for licensure in Massachusetts and there's also uh, other exams for uh, like the 51, the 53, the 47, the 09 um, and this would, would be a good problem to, so, to study as well if you're preparing for those exams. So I'm going to start reading this and maybe before I even read this I'm going to take a quick glance. Scanning this problem over um, I see it's a word problem, but I also see in the answer choices really quickly. I see three values, and uh, just really quickly, you know, I when I th see three values, you know, I might want to take a closer look. And as I take a closer look into a little more detail, I see that I'm adding here, and adding here, and multiplying here, multiplying here. Now, usually when you see three numbers and they're being multiplied. I'm not saying always, I'm just saying a lot of times. When you see number three numbers that are being multiplied, that's usually a clue that you're doing length times width times height. And that's a that's a that's a volume concept. Now I'm not saying that's always the case, but I'm just saying, you know, a lot of times in math when you see three values multiplied together, it might have to do with volume because it's length times width times height. But now we're going to read the problem and find out. Number 15. A shipping container measures 8 feet by 12 feet by 24 feet. The container is to be filled with identical cube shaped boxes, each having size measuring a whole number of feet. Which of the following expression represents the smallest number of such identical boxes that could be packed into the container with no empty spaces remaining? I like this problem a lot. One, because there's got a lot of clues here that are going to help us, lead, help us think about the problem. Um, and there's also um, some key stuff in the very beginning. So let's first start with this, this uh, clue about container. A container, usually when we think of container, we think about something that we can fit things into. And uh, containers are three-dimensional. There's no two-dimensional type of container. So when we're dealing with containers, I want you to think about, I'm sorry, I said two-dimensional, I meant three-dimensional. <laughs> containers are three-dimensional shapes. So you should start thinking about volume right away. And then it's giving us dimensions, 8 by 12 by 24. That's a clue that we're going to be dealing with volume. In some, in some way, we're going to be dealing with volume. So let's say this is um, this is eight. I might actually uh, redo that picture, but um, in some way this is going to involve volume. So now let's look at this and do it in a way that the three-dimensional shape that's going to help us solve it. Ah, don't you? You know what? I'm just going to hand draw it the way I like to do it. Um, this is a fun way. I learned this in uh, elementary school. I think, uh, I don't know, first grade? This is first grade art class. Probably the one or two lessons that I remember. Here's my three-dimensional shape. It's got eight, let's say this is 12, and this is 24. Now I'm thinking about volume. I got this container. I want to fit in these shapes. And I'm looking for the smallest number of such identical boxes. Now, this is tricky because you're, you're thinking, well, why don't you just do 8? If this involves volume, why don't you just do 8 times 12 times 24? That's going to get me a lot of small boxes. Well, this isn't about getting small boxes. It's about getting the smallest number of boxes. For example, if you were to go to, uh, I don't know, Office Max, 
and say you were you or some some place where you could buy boxes and you could get a box that's one foot by one foot by one foot and that costs I don't know five dollars or you could get a box that's four feet by four feet by four feet I'm, I'm just totally free freehanding this I know it's I know it's bad which would and that costs nine dollars which is the better deal well this box that's one foot by one foot by one foot has a full air a volume of one square foot one foot square or cubed sorry but this other box that's only a few dollars more has sides of four by four by four that's four times four is sixteen times another four this has got a volume of sixty four uh, feet cubed it's sixty four times larger than the one smaller box what am I getting at? I'm getting at we're not looking for the, the small the smallest number of small boxes we're look, trying to find the largest box that will take up we're trying to buy the few think about this in terms of getting the fewest number of big boxes to fit into this space so how could I think about that? well if I divided the 4, the 12, and the 24 each by Let's see, what's a number that goes into all of them? A factor, the greatest common factor. Well, 8, 12, and 24 are all divisible by 4. So this means I would have really big boxes of 4 feet by 4 feet. So I could have 6 boxes like that. I'm sorry, my, my artwork from the first grade is really bad, but anyways. If I could have 6, I would have 6 little boxes here now, what would this be divided into? Well, this 24 could be divided into rows of 6, right? And it would be 12 high. You get the idea. This would actually get me, this expression, this expression would help me get to the smallest number of boxes, each of them being 4 feet by 4 feet by 4 feet. So, yes. It is kind of counterintuitive, but I am, get, I am going to that store and buying the fewest number of boxes. They happen to be the largest possible boxes that will fit in this shape. This is a very uh, abstract problem. I think the key here is to identify that it has to do with volume right away. Because then you can eliminate A and D. Because they have nothing to do with volume. And now you're just down to what's the big difference between C and B and that's when you gotta be able to draw the picture and visualize you know the boxes that might not be good for everyone but I think if you can eliminate half the answer choices that's gonna help and I also think this is a good problem to actually try and draw the three-dimensional shape and see what I was doing I know your drawing is gonna be a lot better than mine and then I think by doing that I think maybe it will make more sense so try it. Let me know how it goes, okay? Oh, what's the answer? The answer is B. Uh, B is the expression that gets you to the smallest number of boxes. These boxes here are actually going to be really big. They're all going to be 4 by 4 by 4 Okay? Thanks a lot, team. Keep on watching these videos. Check out one of the... Um, come to one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops. You can register by going to gomath.com or you can sign up for one-to-one -one tutoring on the main website. I hope you found this helpful. Have a great day. Thank you.